Uh, yes. All right. So our next speaker is Zhao He uh, from University de Puy, uh, Paris, actually. <laughs> and she will be talking about wave structure interactions, oscillating water column, and shallow water. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. Thanks, uh, um, because I, I, uh, I just changed my university, <laughs> and now it's the University of Paris Saclay. And thanks, Milton. Uh, uh, first of all, thanks, the uh, organizers. Uh, thanks for invitation. Uh, it's my great pleasure to be here to give this talk. Uh, and today I will present is a um, wave structure interaction oscillating water column in shallow water. Uh, this is a joint work with uh, Eduardo Poch uh, from Sevilla, uh, who is a postdoc and uh, Gaston from uh, Bordeaux, uh, who is a PhD student. So I, I will present the uh, following to four topics. Uh, first, our motivation and uh, the background, and then how to reduce the um, uh, engineering problem into a true transmission problem, into the mathematical problem, and then a rigorous weaponless result of the mathematical model will be given. And finally, I will show you some you know, numerical uh, results that we, um, we implement uh, to, to, uh, for our model. And, and typically, we are motivated by the wave energy uh, converter. And there are some pictures about the wave energy converter. Uh, as you can see in this, in this picture, uh, the wave arrive uh, from the uh, offshore and then enter into a chamber closed by the uh, fixed uh, partially immersed uh, uh, structure. And the motion of the wave change the uh, volume of the air inside the chamber and create an air flow, which pass through a turbine on the top of the chamber and that creating uh, generating electric energy. And our main goal is to understand what happens at the contact line and the contact points. I mean, the place where the surface of the water is contacting with the surface of the structure, uh, this part, and, and how to reduce the whole problem to a transmission problem for the uh, wave model and understand how the object moves with the dynamics of the wave and how the object affects the waves. And so this, this is uh, our motivation. And so how to reduce to, uh, this problem into true um, transmission problems? Uh, the mathematical configuration is the following. Uh, uh, as I said before, uh, given an entrance wave, the wave will move on and pass through the step and then pass through uh, uh, this step, which we call it uh, topography, and then it will pass through the floating object and enter the chamber and activate the turbine. And there are some, a lot of uh, asymptotic models to describe the dynamic of the wave. And in our case, we consider the shallow water equations. And there are some other uh, equations we, uh, we can consider, for example, Poussinisk equations, but is, is, this is not our object, objective for today. And, and the, uh, the idea is to use this model, to, uh, this model to describe the dynamic of the wave and uh, how um, can we couple this um, model with some floating uh, structure. And here, we, uh, so in shallow water um, equations, there are some notations. Um, theta is the surface elevation around the rest state. Is this, uh, this is this theta. And H is the uh, uh, fluid height at the rest is HS. And before this step, and after this step, we have the H0 because we, uh, we consider this step is S. And Q is the horizontal discharge. And P, um, P bar is the surface uh, pressure. And uh, there are some um, constant and uh, unknowns. In there, uh, as you can see in this um, in, the, in this picture, we have a lot of uh, domains. We have the extra domain. When I say the extra domain is uh, not uh, this uh, uh, is uh, is this dom before the step and after the step before the structure, and uh, this domain is also the uh, extra domain. And the inside domain is this uh, is the domain. Uh, under the uh, floating structure. And in the extra domain, we have that uh, the, uh, the pressure is supposed, to, um, uh, uh, is supposed to be the atmosphere pressure. And uh, 
so it's uh, it's a constant and in inside the chamber which is also the extra domain and but we consider that the pressure is depends is not only a, a term of atmospheric pressure but uh, decides on time so in the um in in the um but in the extra domain, theta uh, surface elevation is unknown. And in the intra domain, the, I mean, the projection of the horizontal uh, now of the part where the water uh, surface contacts with the structure, and uh, it's the inverse. The pressure is free, but the surface is constant because the surface should match the bottom of the object. And, but in our case, the object will not move. So we, we know the uh, surface uh, uh, elevation in the inter domain. So this is the hypothesis that we have in this uh, uh, configuration. And there are some, um, uh, regarding to this model, there are some previous results. Uh, for example, uh, um, there are uh, uh, an article by David Lan um, um, considering the uh, shallow water e equations with the floating uh, structure and also uh, um, and, uh, and my collaborator Eduardo Pochi, uh, in for in his thesis, he did the two dimensional case um, with some radio uh, radio um, um, hypothesis, and then um, there are some uh, there are the result of uh, uh, Didier Bouch, David Lan, and Guillemette for the one dimensional Bosonisk um, case and with the fixed solid, and so these are the um, previous result. And so now I'm going to introduce how to uh, um, derive the model. Uh, let us first consider the transmission problem near the step. I mean, near the step, we consider the extra, man, extra domain before the step and the extra domain after the step. As the motion of the wave is described by the one dimensional shallow water equations, as I said before, in the extra domain before the step, the surface pressure is supposed to be the atmosphere pressure, and so this term will disappear. Uh, the, the term in the right hand side will disappear. And in the domain after the step, in this domain, uh, after the step, um, the, the pressure is also the atmosphere pressure, and so this term will disappear too. And uh, so what, what is the first uh, uh, transmission problem? The first transmission problem is given by the two, um, the two conditions. Uh, we have the continuous um, continuity of the surface elevation. And also we have the continuous of the uh, uh, horizontal discharge around this step. I mean, this x, uh, this is zero. This x uh, equal to uh, zero minus is uh, the Mm, is this point in the right hand in the left hand side and zero plus is this point in the right hand side and so um, um now um, what uh, i'm going to derive the uh, second transmission problem uh, i mean the transmission problem near the structure this is uh, um, um uh, this is a case more um, complicated than the case the first case because uh, in the Around the structure, as I said, in the extra domain, we have the uh, pressure is the uh, uh, atmosphere pressure is a constant, and so we don't have this. Uh, uh, we don't have the term in the right hand side, and uh, in the uh, but uh, the height, the fluid height will change. The fluid height is uh, h s plus theta. It's not h uh, uh, it's uh, it's h zero plus theta. It's not h uh, s plus theta, and in the uh, in the chamber, I mean, in the right-hand side of the structure, um, even we suppose that the pressure is a, a, um, a function of time, but uh, uh, as this term is dx, uh, is the derivative um, with respect to the extra variable, and so this term will also disappear, and uh, and then the, the fluid height will not uh, will not change, and so. Uh, let us look. Uh, uh, let us uh, uh, look at the inter domain. We have the uh, we have the continuity of Q. Uh, uh, first, we have the continuity of Q, and so um, if we look at the first uh, first equation, we have uh, uh, for the in the inter domain, as I said before, for the surface elevation, which is constant, we we know we know it's a constant. And so uh, it's known, uh, it's a constant. And so the um, 
呃嗯 d t 呃呃 zeta。Um, zeta i equal to zero, and by the first equation, we get that the horizontal discharge is a is a constant in space, and so uh, uh, uh horizontal discharge is uh, uh is uh, is a constant in space, and so it's just your con uh, a function in time, and um, so which result in the first uh, transmission condition near the structure. This is the first transmission uh, condition near the structure. Uh, this no, I use this notation means that uh, the um, you see uh, in this picture we note uh, this point. This point is L zero plus R, and this point is uh, uh, L zero minus R, and and this this notation means that the value of the quantity at this point minus the value of, uh, of the quantity at this at the left hand side. And so we have uh, it's equal to zero. And but we need one more um, um, one more transmission condition to close our system. Um, uh, so um, our idea is uh, to derive. Uh, so now we need to derive the second transmission condition near the structure, and we uh, we will use the Bernoulli's principle to derive the uh, second transmission condition. Uh, we record that an, an unsteady flow over the streamline is. Uh, uh, um, for Bernoulli's principle for an unsteady flow over the streamline is as follows, and uh, we, if we choose the if we choose A is the point in the left hand side and B is a point in the right hand side and we get directly uh, this this guy. Um, so in the in the shallow water in the shallow water region we we have that uh, this uh, this guy is a, a directly is exactly this uh, Q over. Uh, Q over H, and um, so it, it's worth to mention that uh, in fact Bernoulli's principle is derived from the um, principle of, of uh, conservation of, of energy. I mean, in the absence of uh, um, viscous effect, is the fluid uh, uh, system is a um, conservative, uh, conservative uh, system, and so the total energy of the system remains constant. And this is in fact our case, and. Uh, um, since uh, since the horizontal uh, horizontal discharge is just a constant of um, uh, is just a function of time and uh, the uh, fluid height is constant uh, the fluid height is uh, equal to the height uh, h is zero plus the surface elevation it's a constant in time and in space in the interior domain and uh, also we have this uh, this notation equal uh, equal to the uh, volume in the right hand side I mean, in the chamber, in the chamber, we suppose that the pressure is equal to atmosphere pressure plus a uh, um, uh, plus a, a, a function of time, and minus the uh, the volume of the, uh, the pressure in the left hand side, which is the atmosphere pressure. And so, the uh, you look at this term reduced to uh, this term. Uh, sorry, this blue this blue term, and. Uh, if we uh, if we derive the uh, uh, divisible by, uh, by 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 rho by the uh, by the density and the, the first term the p uh, p bar becomes uh, the, this return the uh, the first rate term and if we calculate directly the um, uh, the integral of uh, uh, this integral and we get uh, uh, we get this the second uh, the the third term okay. So up to now, um, but uh, you look at is here in this uh, in this uh, in this equations we have one um, unknown term which is uh, which is a pressure in the chamber uh, the part which depends on the time and so we need one one more equation to uh, verify one more equation to close our system and so we find in the literature of uh, the engineering paper and that the perturbation P chamber satisfies this ODE. And here the C1 and C2 are two known physical parameters. And so up to now, we uh, we have this for for this uh, for this um, ODE. We can rewrite the true uh, the, uh, the first ODE and the second ODE in a compact form, which give us uh, which gives us uh, the um, the boundary conditions that we um, that we need. So 
this uh, this is uh, the boundary condition. Uh, we call it uh, the semi-linear boundary condition because uh, because this is just a uh, a function depends on you and not on its uh, derivative or others. Um, so after now, we have derived the true transmission problems. One is near the step, which, which is given by this red, uh, red, uh, the true uh, red relation. And the, the second is the, the uh, transmission problem near the structure. Uh, um, we have the first two transmission condition and the second transmission condition where uh, QI, the horizontal discharge in the inter domain, uh, satisfy and the p chamber satisfies uh, the ODE. And so uh, how to, um, uh, up to now, we, we finished to, uh, model, uh, to derive the, uh, our model. And now our goal is to, um, how to um, uh, write, rewrite the transmission problems into uh, an initial boundary value problems with the semi-linear boundary conditions. And then, um, uh, with this initial boundary value problems, we can um, uh, we can we can give a rigorous uh, uh, Weyerhaeuser's result. And so uh, this is the first transmission condition. This is a second transmission condition, and we can rewrite it in a compact uh, form like um, um, uh, this M is a um, constant matrix. And so the uh, if we re rewrite the system, it's it's like this. This is uh, the equation before the dom before the domain uh, in the in the domain um, in the left domain, and the second is the uh, equation in the right domain, and we have the initial condition and also the uh, boundary conditions. And so uh, we derive the uh, quasi-linear hyperbolic or hyper, um, initial boundary value problems with the semi-linear boundary conditions, and then we will give. Uh, in the following, uh, uh, where a local where person is result of this model. So uh, let me first um, uh, begin by a simple uh, system, which is a, a linear, uh, which is a, a, a linear system of the form with a constant matrix. Uh, which um, this is a true by true uh, initial boundary value um, problems with constant uh, uh, coefficient. This uh, this is a constant um, matrix with eigenvalue uh, lambda uh, and eigenvectors uh, e, and we need uh, which, uh, a condition which we call the Chris uh, Lobachinsky condition. And why we need this condition, I will, uh, I will uh, explain uh, as follows. Uh, if we consider a general boundary condition like this, this, this is not, a, um, this is a M, M is a, um, a M by true um, uh, real valued matrix. And if we apply the Laplace transform to the system, to the first equation, and uh, and then uh, in, in time, and, and then we get this equation, and uh, this is a uh, this is uh, an ODE, and we can we can solve this ODE, and this this is uh, uh, an, an, uh, we can solve the ODE, and the general solution is given by this, and then. The boundary condition becomes that um, because uh, this term will uh, the second term will disappear, and so the boundary condition becomes um, becomes like this, and we 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 uh, 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 with this general solution we uh, substitute it into the uh, uh, this equation this ODE, and we uh, derive our um, boundary condition, and uh, the M, we find that m equal to uh, equal to one, and so. So if we want to um, calculate uh, the coefficient and this this uh, this new dot uh, e plus must not be um, zero and so this is uh, the low back, uh, uh, the condition we call the Chris Lobachinsky condition and so this is uh, an explanation why we need this condition and. Also, we need a uh, uh, Chris semi -tracer. Uh Chris semi tracer means a uh, matrix is such a such that S uh, S A is symmetric, and uh, there is a constant such that uh, this this is uh, mm, uh, this uh, this relation holds, and then also there exists uh, a constant such that uh, the 
uh, the red, uh, the blue term is controlled by this red term. I will explain to you why we need the second, uh, the second uh, uh, um, um, condition. Uh, for the first one, um, is the same as uh, in the in the four line uh, case. You just uh, 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 free the ratio symmetrizer such that S A is symmetric with the first condition. But uh, if we do the L two energy estimate, we I mean we multiply the equation uh, this equation by um, by S and by taking the L two scalar product with U, and after integration by part, we get uh, uh, we get this equations and you find that uh, in fact uh, in the four line the red term the, the uh, will disappear uh, the the blue term will disappear uh, due to some cancellations but in the half line there is a boundary uh, there is a uh, boundary term like this um, wait, the, uh, yes there's a boundary uh, term here and this is why we um, have this uh, uh, Oh, sorry, and in the four line, this term will disappear due to the cancellation. And but in the um, half line, um, this term will give us a boundary term. This is why we have this uh, blue term here. And notice that the, this blue term cannot be controlled by the L true norm uh, um, of U. And so, except that this term have, uh, has a good sign. And so, an extra condition is needed. Uh, so, uh, so, a Chris symmetrizer is a symmetrizer such that a term, this term has a good sign, and the trace, this is a trace, can be controlled up to the terms that depend only on the boundary condition, this one. This, so this is why we, we have this red term in the, um, in the properties of the Chris symmetrizer. Um, this term is, uh, um, linked, is linked to, to the boundary conditions. And so we get the L true energy estimate as, as, as follows. And uh, in this energy estimate, you, uh, and um, it's worth to mention that you have not only the estimate of U, but also the control of the trees. In your general case, usually if U is L2, you cannot control the trees, but, uh, but here you have this control. And this is a very important uh, uh, hidden regularity effect for the trees. And you, um, and you will see why uh, this control for the trees is crucial in your case. And so next, yeah, and let me um, introduce the uh, compatibility conditions. Uh, they are, um, here's the definition of the compatibility conditions. Uh, they are um, necessary conditions for the existence of a solution of a regularity. Uh, say m minus one, and uh, if m m equal to uh, equals to one, we have this condition. And uh, more generally, uh, if we differentiate at uh, m times the equation, now here a is uh, a is a constant. Uh, I just gave a simple case, and uh, we have we have this one. And for the initial condition, we note uh, uh, like this. And uh, uh, for the boundary count condition, um, um, uh, as I said before, for this term, we uh, we note it uh, uh, because we have we already uh, differentiated k times, and so we note it by the d d t k g, and uh, um, the, um, we need uh, this. Uh, Combining the initial data, initial condition, and the boundary conditions, we we need uh, this uh, these conditions, and so uh, the definition of the compatibility conditions is that we we say that that uh, uh, the data u uh, zero um, um, belongs to H M and the G belongs to H M uh, satisfies the compat uh, compatibility conditions at order m minus one if the uh, uh, u zero j um, defined in one in here satisfies uh, the, uh, the, uh, this, this relation. And so um, now let me turn to um, uh, the case where the matrix is a uh, uh, a variable uh, with variable coefficient uh, matrix. Uh, here is a four by four um, cases. And the uh, notice that the um, boundary condition is given by, um, by G of T. And uh, so we have this. Uh, so we uh, still need, uh, as before, um, we still need the Chris symmetrizer. 
um, and the difference is that uh, here um, it's not is a new dot uh, uh, view. It's a, it's a matrix uh, um, matrix uh, uh, times um, v, and uh, uh, the Lobakinsky matrix uh, is uh, is this one. We we still need uh, the Lobakinsky condition and uh, the difference um, uh, the between uh, the difference between um, uh, the two cases is that the Lobakinsky condition is become become like this, and. Uh, and, and then we still need the compatibility condition. And the weaponsness of, uh, with all this uh, uh, hypothesis, we can prove a local weaponsness result of this hyperbolic initial, uh, linear initial boundary value problems. And we first do a, 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 priori, a priori L2 estimate, and then we do a high order estimate, and then prove the existence and the unique uh, and the uniqueness of the result, uh, of the solution. And we prove uh, existence of the Chris semitizer. And uh, this result can be found in the article of um, Iguchi and uh, David Land. And uh, uh, for this uh, uh, for this system, and uh, I, I will not give a detailed proof uh, of this system, and I will turn to my uh, our model. Our model um, is a uh, hypo. Uh, in fact, here let us first consider. In fact, in, uh, in our model uh, is a PDE coupled with uh, the ODE. The uh, I mean coupled is that uh, the um, the boundary condition is given by um, an ODE. And here we first consider the uh, the same equation, but the boundary condition is given. It's not given by ODE. Uh, this G of T is given, and so. Uh, the uh, sketch of the web is uh, as uh, is as follows. We first choose an, an iterative scheme, and uh, like this. And uh, uh, surely we need some compatibility conditions. And then uh, we need to do some high norm boundedness and low uh, low norm um, convergence. And then we can prove that uh, um, uh, the uh, the, uh, the sequence. Uh, UN is uh, convergent in L2 and that the limit in, is in some space. And then we prove the local uh, weaponsness result of the system of this hyperbolic uh, uh, quasi linear uh, initial boundary value problems. But in our case, in our case, uh, the, the boundary condition is not given. The boundary condition is given by an ODE. And so let me, um, um, so this is our case. Uh, G of T is given by an ODE like this. And so how, uh, our result is the uh, following. Uh, we can prove that, uh, suppose that uh, the initial data uh, satisfies some compatibility condition. And uh, then we can prove that uh, locally, uh, there is a unique solution to this PDE ODE with uh, such that the solution set, um, belong, to, uh, belong to this space and uh, this G um, belong to H uh, M plus one. And so the sketch, there are some key ingredients that we need. Uh, first, we still need the uh, Chris Lobakins condition as before, um, but here is the Lobakins matrix. And uh, we also okay. need the- so, uh, Two minutes, okay? Uh, okay, I will, I will mm -hmm. finish. I have only two slides. And um, we also need the iterative scheme and the uni uniform bound and the convergence. And what we need to do is to uh, do an estimate for G and uh, for the trees. And so our goal is to um, prove the boundedness of, um, of the solution in, uh, in the higher loam and the convergence of the uh, solution in the lower loam. And so record that we have a true estimate. And so uh, um, if we can also get the high norm uh, estimate energy um, um, uh, estimate which is given by this one is the HM estimate. Um, and so the iterative scheme of the ODE is given by is given by this. And uh, we we first to do the uniform bounded uh, the uniform bounded we, we can rewrite um, by this ODE we can rewrite this G n plus one like this. And we we do uh, uh, um, uh, this uh, this uh, uh, this uh, term um, um, in terms of time uh, appears, and uh, here we uh, th this h uh, an h m estimate uh, h m norm is controlled by uh, this term 
and in the previous time in the previous uh, equations and uh, uh, the um, the trace term and um, this is just due to the uh, energy estimate and the convergence we do the same we can get uh, uh, the difference of this uh, controlled by uh, this term and the difference of the trace and so we, uh, with all this, we end the proof of our uh, well poisonous result. And uh, finally, I would like to uh, give show you a uh, simulation that we did. Uh, so as you can see that uh, um, this is the wave energy converter, the wave uh, from the ocean, and then it will pass through first the step and then pass through the structure, uh, floating structure, and then enter into the chamber and then it will active the turbine here and create the en 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 electric energy. And so I, I stop here and thanks for your, uh, thanks for your attention. All right, uh, I'd like to thank the speaker for a very nice talk. Uh, and uh, I think we can we can have a couple of questions if anyone wants to ask them. Just raise your hand if you. Very well. If uh, uh, there are no questions, so we adjourn uh, and we will be back. By... We'll have lunch break now and we'll come back at 13.10 uh, at 1.10 for uh, uh, Gautam's talk. So see you then.